Down at field level here at MT Bank Stadium, 2019 CA Football Media Day Live. Bobby Broyles and Brandon Noble here. And last but not least, the New Hampshire Wildcats joining us on set. Coach Sean McDonald. We also have Pop Lacey and running back Evan Gray. Gentlemen, I know it's been a while. We haven't had you. You've been able to do everything else but this set. How, yeah. how has Media Day treated you so far? Yeah. It's honestly awesome. It's, it's a good time just going around with everybody else on the, uh, around the CAA, just getting to know them. Yeah. Just mess around, get yeah. a little competitive in the social room. That's, but that's, that's what we heard it's from fun. Elon. We heard you guys got beat in some trivia. Is that true? Honestly, we were listening to the um, speech, and one of the people who ever gave the speech, they told us there was three teams, and apparently it was four or five. Three teams they said with three. Uh, coach changes. Exactly. It was three teams with coach changes. That's what they said in the, in the little oh. interview, and it happened to be four or five. So you were giving false information. We were giving false information. Oh. I was paying attention, but I was listening to the wrong Bobby, this is what we go through all the time with this. Uh, I mean, it's, it's, you know, listening, it's skill, listening skills we, we, are we, we, we were dominating the entire time. We were dominating the entire, <laughs> the entire time. The entire time until the last couple questions. Oh, we were winning. Gosh. We were winning. Okay, guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, Coach, uh, New Hampshire, obviously with the incredible mark, 14 straight FCS playoff appearances coming to an end last year. Uh, has that been a motivational factor for your team, or is it more just, you know what, we're just going to throw away last year? No, we're not going to throw it away. Line. You know, and I think it was great today to have Timmy Hightower talking about legacy. Yep. You know, and uh, you're sitting in the room and you want to hope that these guys absorb it. And I'm hoping it's on tape so I can just put it up on the on the video, one of the one of the first meetings to talk about, guys, what's our legacy? And what's our senior class's legacy going to be? You know, and it was disappointing. You know, and, and the Monday after after the last game, the, the Rhode Island tough loss, Rhode Island, you're in that locker room. And we usually been preparing, uh, talking about who we're going to play, what we're going to do, Thanksgiving, all that stuff. And we were putting our equipment away. And uh, I thought our guys did a great job after that week we talked coming back after that week let's put it to rest and let's go to work and that's what we've done ever since you know thanksgiving day what what has what has the locker room been like i mean you just kind of take a little deeper dive into that what's spring been like was it really competitive did, did you have to push them did they push themselves you know, talk a little bit about what the off season's been like. Well, I'll tell you what, the off season started in January with a meeting of the, of the what I consider the team council. And we sat in the room and I asked them what they want to do. And they, they had a lot of great ideas. And I told them, okay, I'm going to put some of these things into effect, but this is going to be a Lend-Lease program. You know, you guys do what, what you need to do with the locker room, get these guys going, get them back to my standards, our standards. And then, you know, I'll give the thing. And so it was great. We had some competitions that, you know, enabled these guys to win Chipotle dinners and stuff. And, and Fridays became, <laughs> Fridays became a great day you know when they won it was great right, when they yeah. lost hot dogs and beans you know nice. but you know um, <laughs> it, it, it was good and, and you need to do things I think as a coach and as a program and, and in particular as players to to look inside yourself and what you got to do to do better and it started from me and it drifted down to our seniors and, and I'm, I'm excited where we're at right now Bob, obviously, despite the tough season, this defense was very strong last year, was up near the league in many statistical categories. What can this unit take from last year as you guys get ready for 2019? Honestly, playing hard and doing our job. Um, our job is to get off the field, give the offense back the ball constantly, and that's all. That's the only thing that we can do and put the uh, ball in the offensive hands, let them do what they do best, and that score and put points on the board. Um, and for us, that's that's pretty much our motto. We're going to do what we need to do, um, and we're going to give the ball back to the offense, and hopefully they're going to do what they're going to do, and we have a bunch of confidence in them, and we've been instilling that confidence in them since – like you said, since the first week of that first meeting with the uh, team council, we've been instilling that in our players and we've been instilling that in our defense and our offense. Evan, talk a little bit about what's gone on from, from, your, from the players' perspective. Uh, you know, everybody sees Saturday, right? What, what you guys have done since January, since the end of the season. What have you guys really done the last couple of months you know, to, to come together as a team and make sure that, that the same things don't happen? Well, going back to what Coach Max said, uh, we wanted the team to be player driven. So every time we're sitting there doing workouts, mat drills, we got we I try to tell people like act like you want to be here, you know, like try to motivate. We need we knew we went, we got to a low point last year. We don't want to go back to that. So from this like this month's that in the summer, we got people here working out. We're just trying to motivate each other. And like what Pop said, the defense motivates us and we're trying to motivate them. So we just got to produce more and I feel like we're really going to try to work on that this coming season. There's a lot of experience returning on that side of the ball, the offensive side of the bar yeah. ball, but you do have to replace quarterback Trevor Knight. 
What has that quarterback position battle been like so far, and and what are you looking out looking for out of the offense? It's been great to be honest with you. I think there's three kids that have separated themselves in a lot of different ways. Mm-hmm. You know, Tommy Harrion, um, Max Brosmer, and, and, and Brett Edwards. And I think the other two guys, Ivan and and Hedy, are, are good football players. It's going to take us 20 practices to figure <laughs> out who the next guy is. Yep. And for me, that's great. Yep. And I don't know how everybody else, they're all, oh, Coach, how are you going to do that? I, I'm so excited because the guy that's going to separate himself mm-hmm. and going to lead our team better have his A game every day when he's coming to work. Yep. You know, because the expectations of him, him, and the rest of the guys are going to be huge for that kid to go. Now, not pressure, yeah. but the expectations, you know, because I think we got enough weapons around the, on the offensive side of the ball, and plus our offensive line is a little deeper than we've been in a little while. Mm-hmm. All those things will take care of itself, but it's going to take some while to figure out who that guy is. And, we know, as I've always said, you got to put him in the hot water mm-hmm. and to find out how they're going to taste. And, and th- this, this fall camp is going to be the most interesting team we're going to drink in a long time. Right. You guys like are that it. hot water, mm-hmm. right? You're the, you're the first hot water to put them in. Right? We're definitely <laughs> exactly. the first hot water what, to put them in. What are you seeing from the quarterback position right now? Honestly, we're seeing a lot of confidence from um, our young guy stepping up and also Tommy. He um, finished off the game against Rhode Island very strong. Um, he was throwing the ball with a lot of confidence. And honestly, just bringing that into spring ball and into the summer, um, we have about 60 guys up right now for um, the summer, which is unlike um, unlike uh, anything for us. And right now we're a player-driven team, as Evan said and as Coach Max said. Right now we're making sure we're holding each other accountable and we're making sure that we're going to be able to control our own destiny. That's what we want to do, and that's pretty much how we want to make our statement and make our mark. Pop, you've uh, enjoyed quite a successful career at New Hampshire. You've been a big playmaker on this defense. A lot of intercept, you know, a good handful of interceptions and creating turnovers. Uh, what are you looking to accomplish here in your last season with the Wildcats? Honestly, I want to get a um, CAA championship first and foremost. I want to win the musket back, um, go three for four. Um, instead of finishing 500, I want to finish uh, at least seven, seventy-five percent. You know what I mean. So um, you said it, bro. I tell you about it, baby. <laughs> <laughs> and also, number one goal is to be a graduate, as Coach Max says. So um, definitely want to be a graduate, and he's also helped me a lot um, to graduate early um, in December as well, and to also just um, motivate my team and leave a legacy that that somebody's going to remember, and all the young guys are going to remember. Oh, Pop Lacey did this when he was here, and honestly, I feel like I should do this because his career turned out well mm-hmm. and while he did this. So honestly, just leave a legacy and let players know and let people know that hard work is really going to pay off, and things may not always go your way. Mm-hmm. Um, certain things will happen to you, injuries, uh, setbacks, failures, everything like that, but as long as you keep your head down and you keep driving and you keep going, um, things are going to work out in your way in the end. Evan. All right, here's the toughest question of the day you're going to get. All right, you ready? So Uh-oh. I am hungry. All right, it's lunchtime. I haven't eaten. I've been up since about 4 o'clock. I hated camp. All right, what's your kind of comfort food, go-to meal during camp that gets a little smile on your face, kind of gets the day done, or maybe gets the day started? Hmm. <laughs> you know, or, you know, in the morning <laughs> – uh, nothing really gets me going. Like I usually, <laughs> I usually try not to eat before practice. Yeah. But uh, some issues with that. <laughs> and there, I've had issues with that. But I would <laughs> definitely say uh, probably like after like around dinner, some stir fry from uh, the dining hall. Yeah. Get some some chicken, some shrimp, some pineapples. Got great great some lettuce, service there and some, and the stir some brown rice, some <laughs> Joe Cho sauce. Well, so, it's got a list. <laughs> you got a list. So I like yeah, it. I got. What about what? You? <laughs> Honestly, I'd have to go with the stir fry too. The stir fry is amazing. I'd get some chicken, shrimp, um, put some peppers, onions, uh, some greens in there. And honestly, that's the go-to because you can really never go wrong with the stir fry. And the ladies at the stir fry station, they love us anyway. And <laughs> so go. I yeah. mean, they, they, they hook us up like regardless. They, they know us by heart, like by name, by name, by and everything. Yep. So they hook us up when we go there. Now you were nodding your head in agreement with the stir fry. Is that what the coaches are eating too? Or uh, well, we got a couple coaches that ain't eating stir fry. I'll tell you that. <laughs> coach, Coach, Coach Miller is not a stir fry guy. No, no. Coach uh, Miller is uh, everything coach. on the dining hall. If he's seeing this, I love working you, hard and work and get it to it. He better get to the stir fry. <laughs> you know, um, it, 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 it's it's a fun atmosphere in camp in a lot of ways. Uh, we do a couple things that that to, to, to make the guys some team bonding things and. You know, the kids do a nice job in the dining hall. But, again, what they said is what makes, I think, unique, New Hampshire so unique is the people that are in that place right. that are that are the, the workers there, that are the cooks. You know, they take great care of our kids, but our kids are very responsible. Coach, uh, 
10 of the 12 CA teams have been to the playoffs in the past four years, yep. which is incredible from one conference. And obviously a team that's been to the playoffs many times you have. What does it mean to see a stat like that? And what does it say about the league? And, and how are you able to use that in your, you know, to talking with the team, getting them ready from week to week and recruiting and in and, and many aspects? You know, you got to look at it, and, and I try to explain to these guys that it's, it, it's in my mind, you know, eight to ten one-week seasons. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, and, and playing this Division One game, everybody's all around. People, well, I'm not talking about that. That game is here, there, and gone. Yep. You know, that, that doesn't mean anything to us. You win it, obviously it's great. You lose it. It should. And just like, again, I, I, Timmy Hightower hit so many good topics. <laughs> 24 hours, let it go, man, because that next one is so huge. Mm -hmm. And the games that you're playing in September and October are going to get you to November 1st, and then you look up and say, where are we? And last year we weren't there. This year we're going to be there. You know, so as we look at it, how do we get through and navigate those things? And the league sets you up for mm -hmm. what happens after Thanksgiving. You know, when you play teams, you go on the road to a Central Arkansas and win a game. You go on the road to a McNeese and you win a game. Yep. You go to Southeast Louisiana. You know, the only place none of us have won at is North Dakota State. <laughs> yeah. You know, and nobody's winning there. You know, yeah. and, and so, but those are the things you got to look at as a team and as a coach on how you're preparing and what you're doing. Yep. Well, we wish you guys all the best of luck here in 2019. Thank and you. Appreciate trip it. Trip back to the playoffs, hopefully in your future. Uh, and once again. Yeah.